This is just to install Pulse on Reaper, and hopefully I'm going to get a chance to show you guys how it works in Studio One as well. But this should also be considered as a guideline to install any kind of VST plugin because it all works under the same principle. Basically, if you can unzip a file, you can install Pulse. It's really quite simple. So... <sighs> And you guys have seen me admonish people for showing the Windows file system. This is the one time I'm going to do it because this is a basic how to install video. So yeah, you're going to need to know how to use the file system, I guess. So if you're going to, like I said, if you can unzip, you're fine. So we just open up. We don't want Mac OS. We're going to go into Windows and we have, we've got the Pulse AAX plugin for Pro Tools, which I don't have. So what we've got here are two options. We've got X64 and 86. That depends on 32-bit and 64-bit oper operating system. We are using Windows 10 64-bit. And what we want to do is just go to our program files directory, scroll on down to VST plugins, make sure I'm X64 here, yep, and drop pulse.dll into it. It's really that simple. Continue. I was just going to extract. It's in the proper folder now, and we're good to go. Now, if I want to put that in my VST3 file, we want to go to Program Common Files, and then VST3, and we're going to put pulse.vst3 in there. Continue. Drop it in. It's that simple. All right, next up, we want to load up Reaper. We're going to have a little fun here. Now, you guys remember I did that video a couple weeks back where I showed you guys why do I have to mic up a speaker? Why do I need a speaker cabinet and whatnot? This is if you don't have the space or you can't have the super loud volumes and you want to get raging metal tones so you don't have to record super, super, super loud. Everything's done internally. Now, we what we want to do is we want to point Reaper to where that VST is. So we're going to go into Options, Preferences, Plugins, VST, right here. So we've got Program Files, VST Plugins, Common, and VST3. Those are the two folders we just dropped things into. Let's uh, just run a rescan. Boom, it should have found everything. If I can just maybe make a new track here and just make sure Pulse is going to go on here. Let's make track. Open that up. You can see Pulse already loaded up there. But we're going to throw the VST on there. So I'm just going to do filter for Pulse. VST Pulse 3. There we go. Boom. There it is. It's that simple. I mean, and if I want to run the 64-bit Pulse, just VST Pulse. There we go. We got both versions ready to go. So it's just a matter of knowing where your effects folders lie and pointing your DAW to where those folders are. Now, most of them are just going to default there, but in, if, in case you were wondering how the hell everything winds up where, that's the way how to do it. I hope I kept this simplified enough that, um, that it shouldn't really cause too many problems. Now, if you're still super confused after this, I'd say hit up one of the forums, either a Reaper forum or a Studio One forum, and hopefully somebody there can kind of walk you through a bit. But hopefully this is going to give you the tools you need to get started. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys to have a great time learning how to record. Until next time, don't let making records make you crazy.